Howdy folks. My attention was just recently brought to the Celtic People's Party of Ireland and I decided to take a look and I want to critique them a little because we desperately do need someone to represent us you know to, to firmly stand on the principles that will keep our people and our country alive. So it's best that we critique the people who are proposing to do this so that somebody can come along and do a better job than them or they themselves can change their attitudes and policies. Now, I like all this stuff you know, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It kind of reminds me of the program of the NSADP. You know. And um, under the Law and Order header, I kind of like how the um, how the army and navy aren't there to serve the whims of the politicians. Absolutely. You know pay f as a mark of loyalty to their country, all officials will be expected to pay for their own traveling expenses, just as every other citizen has to do, and just as every local representative has to do, I will add. You know, you don't, you don't see anyone in the um, local council, depending on the taxpayer's money to move them around, and usually Sadly, these people have to spend almost as much as they make being a counselor. It's a shame. One of, one of my problems comes in is with the abolition of what they call maritime law. And in the program of the NSADP, they called Roman law. Um, both terms are ap applicable. But basically what they're suggesting here is to get rid of arbitrary laws, legislation. <coughs> Sorry. And I find that this is a little contradictory. Oh dear. It's people's names are coming up on the fucking corner of the screen. Fuck off. All right, the contradiction I see here, well, first of all, what is common law? You can see it there. It's three points. Don't damage people. Don't damage property. And when you enter a contract with someone, it's in the strictest sense. It is strictly between the contractee and the contractor. And no third parties may gain a benefit or rights nor can they incur liabilities. So that's great stuff, right? Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, I just find it a bit of a contradiction here when it comes to pornography. Because common law only really has a place in a libertarian society. While right here, when you see underneath pornography, you're talking about... Um, a conservative society. Now it's true that pornography um, has damaging effects on the health of the society and therefore has no place in one. That's true. But they suggest that pornography in all its forms will be banned outright. Every internet service provider in Ireland will be required to block any sites carrying such material and we will ensure any international internet services will be made aware of this ban also. Similarly, films and TV programs of a violent and or pornographic nature will also be banned outright. Anyone in breach of these laws will be given a severe custodial sentence in accordance with Article 1 of Common Law. And that is the edict against damaging people.
In order for me to put my trust in this party, I'll really need an in-depth conversation about what exactly constitutes um, violence. <clears throat> First of all, how does pornography, um, just, you know, the depiction of naked people, basically, because they did say in all, all its forms, and softcore porn, the depiction of naked people, it will come under that header. I'd like to have a conversation on how does that necessarily damage people. So you're either for common law or you're not. There's no in-between. But for these guys, there is an in-between. And what about violence? How does that hurt a person? You know? Uh, and and it, it brings up an interesting contradiction, well, I'll, which I'll get into later when it comes to road traffic behavior. Uh, like, does this apply to art? You know, all throughout history, we have been inclined to sculpt statues and make paintings of naked people. And this was seen as a beautiful thing. An artistic expression. But that doesn't stop somebody from being aroused by it. It doesn't stop people from having also lustful thoughts when they see it. Actually, that is a part of the appeal. That's a part of life and art. And isn't the idea of art to depict aspects of life? Um, so if you, you know, are you, are you gonna censor us and tell us that we can't depict violence or naked people? Like, how does that jive with common law? If you give me a severe custodial sentence for depicting violence, an aspect of life, in an art piece that I've made, aren't you in contravention to common law? Because this right here kind of looks like legislation. Or as it's called here, maritime law. It's kind of weird. But it's really a question of trusting the individual, which, you know, we have to extend to people. But they'll pick and choose in which area they're going to trust people. And we see that exem exemplified in their attitude to road traffic behavior. They want to get rid of speeding offenses. And I'm sure that there's other, I'm sure that there's other traffic offenses that could be gotten rid of if you're going to get rid of speeding offenses. But that isn't mentioned here. Now, they're telling us that somebody should be able to go as fast as they want. Because we have to trust people. We have to give them responsibility. And if they fuck up, and they hurt someone or someone's proper property, then, again, a severe custodial sentence. But it's kind of, it doesn't jive, you know, it kind of makes me think that the author of this, or the conceiver of this idea, has never driven in their lives. Um, even rode a bicycle. Believe it or not, riding a bicycle is uh, much more dangerous than driving a car in terms of, you know, how fast you can go in it. If you rode a, si a bicycle as fast as, a car, uh, as you could drive a car, you know, the average speed, uh, you'd get into a lot more accidents. 
Uh, that's not neither here nor there. I'm just kind of laying things out for you here. The problem with this is that as a driver, you are in a giant, giant chunk of steel <clears throat> traveling along at a dangerous speed already at five miles per hour you are traveling at a dangerous speed because of the size of your vehicle and what it's made out of and the faster you go the less agency you have. That's just that's just a fact of physical nature. It's, it's physics. The faster you're going, the less agency you have. The reason for that is because if it's not already clear to you, the faster you're going, the less time you have to respond to emerging events. Like, never mind, you know, that the uh, elimination of speeding offences will inevitably mean that there will be roads built where there won't be speed signs, so nobody will have any kind of an idea of how fast anyone else is driving. And, and you know, you could come flying around the corner when someone's going at a snail's pace, it might be raining and you might be fucked fuck's sake and I'm sorry I'm not nearly as eloquent when I'm freestyling sorry folks I'm just trying to squeeze this oversized thought out of my tiny head here Let's say you're driving along at 70, 80, 90 miles per hour. Yeah, yeah, if we're going to get rid of speeding restrictions, at least let's get back to the miles per hour. Chuck the kilometers out the window. Um, and something goes wrong with your car. Something, I don't know, I'm not a mechanic. A lot of different things could happen. And you're going so fast that you can't properly control the malfunction and you can't have a, a, a controlled landing as it were <clears throat> and god forbid you crash into someone you kill one of the people in the car and you fuck up the car how do we determine how much agency you've had in that situation in order to punish you or not. It's not always that it can be determined whether it was the driver's fault or the fault of the car when something goes wrong. Because normally people are driving at a reasonable rate and they can then stop driving if the car is broken. If everyone's going as fast as they want, then you're going to have more circumstances where you have crashes, where it's unclear whether the car itself was at fault. And even further than that, you have to determine was it long-term driver negligence of the health of the car? Or was it a manufacturing fault? So this is this stuff is kind of eh, wavy gravy, right? Another problem I have with this manifesto, as it were, is the introduction of the punt, but not entirely. The introduction of the punt for local and national 
exchanges. But the maintenance of the Ural, which will, you know, be attached to the attached to the um, it will be put on a one-to-one -one basis with the euro and for some reason that's supposed to stop fluctuations I don't understand that I don't think it's a, it's a really intelligent understanding of how economics works but the idea that you're going to keep the euro but you're going to do all of this stuff no, no, that's not how the European work, European Union works. Uh, there's a lot of provisions in here and demands that just aren't going to jive with the EU. You know, if you're going to say that you're not going to be a part of the army or police force of the EU, and you're going to tell your farmers that they don't need to listen to legislation, and you're going to police the ocean around the island and stop other Europeans from fishing in it, then you're in contravention of the European Union. It's very simple. Either you're in or you're out. You know, you don't negotiate with utter evil. Evil tells you how things are going to go down. <clears throat> I think overall this is weak. Um, you know, I don't think it's going to work. You know, like I said, I like a lot of the ideas and much of it amounts to national socialism, which, you know, I'm, I'm cool with. Let's do that. Um, but speaking of national socialism, they seem to be pro-Jews in Israel. And they, they, they say that, uh, you know, the dignity of Irish and our right to exist is something that you could also apply to the Jews in Israel as well as the Palestinians in occupied Palestine. You know, and, and you gotta take a side, you know. Y you can't be flip-floppy like this. Please, for God's sakes. The land that is known as Israel, you know, the original piece of land that Israel was given uh, against the uh, against the integrity and sovereignty of Palestine, by the way, it was a piece of Palestine that they were given. That was Palestine. That that's the point, you know. So what? You can't side with Palestinians and side with Israel. I'm sorry. A, they both belong on that piece of land, is what you're saying. Sure, yeah, uh, tell the Jews to get back into the piece of land that they were given and return the occupied pieces of Palestine to the Palestinians, okay. But you just legitimized the very existence of Israel. I'm sorry guys, this is shit. This is absolute shit. No, I don't know. Are there any actual politicians involved in this? Anyone with any kind of any kind of experience? Like, they definitely have very, very, very important issues that they've taken on, like the planned genocide of the Celtic people of Ireland. Yes. And the water charges. 
which, by the way, if you haven't been up on the latest, <laughs> that's out the window. Irish water is going to tank. 100%, it's out the window. So don't pay your charges because you won't get that money back. It's just gone into the hole. <laughs> Disappeared forever. And that's the funny thing about corporations. That nobody, in the end, is accountable. So there's nobody you can ever go to and say, Hey, uh, do you remember that 225 euros I gave you? Can I have it back? You know? So. <laughs> yes, they have, they have valid concerns, yes, but not very tangible policies. Celtic People's Party of Brittany? Ah, okay. So, uh, wow. They actually have broad appeal. Ooh, Nazi, Nazi symbol. <laughs> Alright, so what if so, um I wasn't imagining the um <clears throat> the NSADP connections here. Cause I, I'm I'm pretty sure that uh So I wasn't um I wasn't entirely sure that they lifted their inspiration from the 25 points of the Nazi party program. I mean, all of, you know, all except that is applicable to Ireland. Like I've actually uh, made this into a bit of a project where I changed out all the relevant words and put words in relevant Ireland. I'll be releasing that soon. But, uh, you know, think about it, guys. It's not all that bad of an idea. <laughs> Anyhow, very, very interesting stuff. I just wish that the people out there who have the energy to represent us would, you know, think about their positions a little better. Because that is what will stop the progress from occurring. You know? You can't have your cake and eat it too. Leave the EU outright. And if you're going to have common law, then let's have common law. But if you're going to have a Nazi style social program that outlaws pornography, then have that and don't tell us common law. Anyway. I'm slightly tippy from the rum I'm sipping on, and if I don't stop myself now, I could ramble on for hours, but I won't do that. This is the Irish Identitarian signing out, and hold out hope, folks, because we will change this around. <laughs>